In this video, I just want to show you a little bit about the for loop in R that we've seen in the lectures so far when we've been talking about uh, simulations. So this is this is not a video about further econometrics. It's just filling in uh, a, a couple of the, a, a bit more detail about the for loop um, for those of you who aren't quite catching on to how that's working. And, and I'll just show you a, uh, an application just to give you an idea of, of why this might be a useful thing to know. So the, the for loop that we've been seeing with simulations is not just useful for simulations, it's actually useful for lots of things. First of all, before looking at the for loop itself, just a quick reminder about this kind of sequence syntax that we can use in R. So if we go, you know, 1 colon 10, then we get a sequence from 1 up to 10. You know, if we go 3 colon 10, we get a sequence from 3 up to 10 and so on. Okay, so these sequences form the basis of the for loop that we specify in R. Uh, so let's go across to a, an empty script here. Um, and we'll set up a little for loop, just as we've been doing in lectures. So for j, so j is just some, we just choose a letter. Okay, j doesn't refer to anything like a variable, it's just a made up letter. j in 1 to 10. And what that part of the syntax is saying is we want to execute some commands 10 times. And for each of those commands, j will take the value 1, then 2, then 3, and so on. Okay. Then the commands that we want to repeat these 10 times go inside the curly brackets. Um, I usually put them on a separate line. You don't have to, you know, just for readability. Um, now what we could do is just something very simple like print j. Okay? And what that's going to do is it's going to repeat the statement print j 10 times. And it's going to put in j is equal to 1, and then j is equal to 2, and so on. Okay? And there's the result. Okay, so it prints out 1, then it prints out 2, then it prints out 3, and so on. You can expand on that. So if you want to repeat a task whereby a particular operation gets carried out on each of these numbers j, then you could do something like this. We'll put in the command, let's say, paste 0. Um, well, let's just do this first, so number like this, just to illustrate this paste command. So what this paste command does is it pastes together the objects that you give it in the list of, of arguments that you give it. So this will paste the word number to the number j. So when we run that, we'll get, instead of just 1, 2, 3, 4, we get number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4. Okay? So it gives you some readable output, and you can produce that readable output line by line in that way. So that's the, that's the paste command. It kind of sticks together, pastes together the various things that you want to write out. So we could repeat some operations on each of these j's, right? So, you know, the square, um, let's fix that, the square of j is, uh, not quotes, j squared. So what that's going to do is it's going to print out for us what is the square of each number from 1 up to 10, okay? like that, square of 1 is 1, square of 2 is 4, and so on. Um, so you can see how this kind of uh, looping structure can be used to repeat an operation one after the other. Um, now, it doesn't just have to operate on the numbers that are in this sequence here. So another way in which we're going to use this kind of loop is to run through the elements of a vector. So I could, for example, set up a vector uh, of, uh, let's say, some random numbers, some normally distributed random numbers, and I'm going to have um, 10 of them. So if we, if we run this now, we're going to get n random numbers being stored in the nv vector. Okay. And then what we could do is we could go through this random vector, one element after another, and we could print out, let's say, the square of each of those numbers. So the square of the jth element of that vector is the jth element of the vector squared. Okay. So what this loop is going to do is instead of just running through and squaring the j, it's going to run through and it's going to square each element of this random vector that we created and print out the result. Let's take a look. 
Okay, So we'd obviously want to round off those results in order to make it readable, but what you can see is that we have here our original random numbers. These are just the normally distributed random numbers that are contained in NV. And then here are the squares of each of those numbers. We've gone through one by one and printed those out. Okay. So that's the point of the loop, right? So whatever you, if you have a task that you want to do repeatedly, you can automate that repetition using a for loop. All right, that's not terribly inspiring though, is it? So what I want to show you is something that's a bit more relevant to econometrics, a situation in which you may uh, want to do such a for loop um, for data analysis, uh, not just for simulations. What we have here is a data file, a loopy data file. And I'll show you that, I'll just open that up in, uh, in Excel to show you what it looks like. Okay, so it looks like this. We have here in the first column, a variable called Y, and then we have some potential explanatory variables, X1, X2, X3, X4, and so on. And the task um, here, let's just check the sample size. So the sample size, so 121 rows, so we have 120 observations here. The task here is to try to figure out which one of these X variables, considered on its own, so considered as a simple regression, which one of these X variables best predicts this Y. Okay, so in other words, we want to think about doing a regression of Y on X1 and get the R squared, and Y on X2 and get the R squared, and whichever one of those two gives us the higher R squared is the one that's better predicting the Y. Okay, and we want to find out the answer to that amongst all of these possible X's. Okay, so the kind of thing where maybe you're a quantitative uh, analyst and your boss comes to you and says, you know, our client wants to do some strategy or portfolio that looks like this. Okay, in our database, the, the, the strategies or portfolios that we know about are these. Which one of these is closest to what this proposed one is? Okay, which one of it fits best, predicts that best? Okay, in this kind of numerical sense. How many of these possible um, X's do you have in your database? Well, you've got a thousand of them. Okay, this is a big spreadsheet that has a thousand possible X's. So you would, without the use of a for loop, need to sit there and go LMYX1, LMYX2, and do that a thousand times and go through all the R squares and hope you can find the largest one. Okay, and you know, then potentially your boss says to you, well, by the way, I'm meeting the client in 20 minutes, so give me the answer now. Okay. What we're going to do, therefore, is just to write ourselves a little R script to perform that task. We're going to do a thousand regressions of Y on X1, Y on X2, Y on X3, and we're going to find out which of those regressions has the largest R squared. So this is an example of a, a kind of a repeated task that can be automated very easily using a loop. Um, so let's go back to our program here. Um, we don't need that, let's get rid of that. Let's instead read in our um, data file, which is loopydata.csv. Okay, let's just check first of all that that, oh, did I not set the working directory? Apparently not. So we'll set the working directory and we'll run it again. Good. And let's check that that has read in. So we'll go to our environment and we have, looks all right, 120 observations on 1001 variables. And those look like the kind of numbers that we were seeing, seeing before. You know, so we can click on that, and there's our there's our data set. Let's go, okay, 120 observations that way, and a thousand X's going over there. Lots of them. Uh, okay, so let's set up our regression analysis now. So what we're going to do is do a regression of Y on X1, Y on X2, Y on X3. So we'll set up and there's a thousand of them. So here is our setup for the loop. I've left out the one. Okay. So for each J in one to a thousand, what do we want to do? Well, we want to do a regression of Y on X1 and then X2 and so on. Um, so there's a couple of ways that we can achieve that. Here's a, here's a simple way. So this DT is our data frame. And notice when you look at this data frame, you can see it in the list here, that the first variable is called Y, and then the second variable, or the second column in that data frame, it's actually even clearer here, the second column is X1, 
the third column is x2, and so on. Okay, so the way that we can do this, uh, it's not the only way, but the way that we can do this is to define ourselves an x variable, which is uh, the jth column of the data frame that we've just read in. Okay, so uh, when j, sorry, j plus 1, so when j is equal to 1, we're going to set x to be the second column of the data frame. Okay, so when j is equal to 1, x is going to be set equal to x1, that column. Okay, and then when j is equal to 2, x is going to be redefined to be the third column, okay, which is the second x. So what this loop is going to do, first of all, is define a new variable called x corresponding to the particular column of the data frame uh, for the value for the xj variable. And then we can do our regression. Um, and in fact, we don't even need to, we, we don't want to print out a thousand regressions on our console, and we don't even need to save a thousand regressions. Remember, the task was to find the highest R squared. So let's set ourselves up a, uh, let's say, a vector for the R squareds, that, so R squared vector, the V, uh, call it whatever you like, um, and I'll call that a matrix and n row, and I'm going to say n row equals 1 and n col equals 1,000. So this is actually a row vector that I'm setting up here, and I'm going to show you why in a minute as to why I'd want to do it that way around. You know, on other occasions we've had n rows equals 1,000 or some number and n cols equals 1. In this particular instance, it's just slightly more convenient to do it this way. Makes no logical difference, but I'll, I'll show you why in a minute. Um, let's store now the R squared for the regression of Y on this particular X that we, we have just defined here. Okay, so R2V of J. So what we're going to do here is put the R squared into the Jth element of this matrix from, uh, and the way that we can just save the R squared alone and forget the rest, we don't want to save a thousand regressions, we just want a thousand R squareds. So first of all we create the summary of the regression of Y on X. And that's from the data equals dt. Okay, so that would save the entire summary. There's lots of that. We don't want the entire summary. We just want the r squared element of that summary. Okay, so pulling apart that command, it does the regression. It creates the summary. That summary has lots of elements in it, right? You've seen summaries being printed out on the screen. Uh, it's just picking out the R squared element of that summary and saving it in this matrix. Once we've done that, we're going to have this thousand dimensional matrix filled up with a thousand R squareds. And we want to go through and find out which of those has the biggest R squared. Okay? So you could go through and look at them yourself and just do it by eye. That would of course be silly. We have a command for that. Uh, and that command works like this. We could say that the best regression, uh, so I'm just making, that's a, that's a variable name, I'm just making that up. So best regression is equal to, and this is the command, max.col uh, of the R squared matrix. So this max.col thing, this is the command which returns to you which element of the row of the matrix uh, is the largest is the maximum. So in this case, this is why, the, the use of this command here is why I set up this matrix as having uh, one row and lots of columns. Because this max.col will work its way across this row and return which column number has the maximum value. So which column number has the maximum R squared. Um, so that's, that's the point of that. This max.col works across the rows to find maximal maximum elements, hence defining this as a row. And that's it. That should do the job, right? This is going to do a thousand regressions within this loop. So for each j, it chooses the x that's of interest, it runs the regression and saves the r squared, and then it goes around and does it again for the next x, and then it goes around and does it again for the next x, and then eventually saves whatever is the best regression amongst those in this best reg variable. So let's run that, hope it works. So it sits there for a minute while it does the thousand regressions and now it's finished. Let's have a look what is contained in best reg. Uh, 42, 
Okay, of course. So the number 42 that's returned from this is the number of the regression, which is the best one. Okay, which uh, column of this um, matrix here is the best? I'll just show you that R2V, just so you know there's stuff in it. So that's kind of a big, horrible mess of a matrix. But what you can see is, you know, the last regression had an R squared of 0 0.009, the thousandth regression. The 999th regression had an R squared of 0 0.0003, and so on. Okay, so these are all of the R squareds. There's a thousand of those, and this max dot col command has gone through and picked out the regression which is the best of those and it said it was number number 42 okay so let's have a look at regression number 42 now um, uh, since this is our best one it is a regression that we might want to save and do some stuff with so the um, the equation can be the lm and we can just type this in directly now x42 we know that's our best x in this case it's the one that maximized the r squared uh, and let's uh, run the regression and what will we do? Let's print out a summary uh, of that regression. That will do. Oops. Okay, and we'll see, we'll see how well that fits. It goes away, does the work. And here is our, this is now our best regression. So our best regression in this case has an R squared, which is pretty high, right? 93.91. And we have the intercept and the slope and all of the usual stuff that you get um, for a regression. Uh, okay, so that's, of all of those thousand predictors, we have picked out the one, number 42, which best predicts the Y in this case. And to complete that, what you could do as well is, um, we could just look at a, a scatter plot to see how that regression, um, or how that regression relationship actually works. So we could look at the x being uh, x42, and against as against the, the y. Um, and I'm just going to put in a couple of other little options here. So this PCH is just telling us that we want the, we're going to do a scatter plot, and that's telling us we want solid, um, solid points for the plot. And let's make them red that's fun and the CEX is just telling us how big those points should be okay so that's going to generate us a, a, a scatter plot um, of this chosen regression relationship oh and look there it is 